appropriation of part of 2901 Hammond Bay Road and part of 2915 Hammond Bay Road. Add item 11M, staff reports, Central Vancouver Island Multicultural Society Memorandum of Understanding. Replace pages 98 and 99, information only reports. Report from Mrs. M. Hutchinson, Economic Development Officer, regarding activities of the Economic Development Department. Okay, and uh, that item um, 20B, like Bravo, I think has been uh, pulled as well. The delegation's not here. That is not being added this evening. Thank you. Okay, could I ask for an adoption for the agenda, please? So moved. Oh. Second one. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, adoption of the minutes? I moved the adoption of the minutes as it relates to the meeting held uh, on uh, Monday, December the 7th at City Hall. Second. And uh, the minutes of the council meeting dated uh, December 14th. Thank you. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, presentations. The first, first presentation is um, Ms. Deb Kennedy from the Nature Trust to provide a presentation regarding the voices of Nature Concert and the students from Seaview Elementary School to perform a song from the concert. And um, normally there's a limitation on time. Yes. However, anything less than 10 minutes and we'll think you're wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Rattan and Councillors. On behalf of the Nature Trust of British Columbia and the Brant Wildlife Festival, I wish to thank you for the opportunity to address Nanaimo City Council. The Nature Trust has been working to sustain nature and its many gifts such as fresh water and clean air since our inception in 1971. With a solid scientific expertise and business acumen, we have built a leading land conservation organization. At the heart of our business, is land acquisition. We acquire land through purchase, donation, and lease. With the help of many partners, we have acquired 150,000 acres across the province, including key properties on Vancouver Island, the Lower Mainland, the Okanagan, the Kootenays, and the Peace River. We are a significant player in the mid-Vancouver Island, as many of you know. Our properties include community treasures such as Buttertubs Marsh, Somino's Marsh, Englishman River, and the Nanaimo River estuary, which recently won a best practice award for restoration work from the International Jury for United Nations Human Settlements. Acquiring the land is only the first step. We must care for it in order to maintain or enhance the conservation values. We have land managers located in Cranbrook, Oliver, Vancouver, and here in Nanaimo. Tom Reed is our Vancouver Island land manager. In addition to land acquisition and land management, we are encouraging a conservation ethic in the next generation through summer conservation youth crews, scholarships, and programs such as Voices of Nature. The Nature Trust coordinates the Brant Wildlife Festival each year. A little black goose makes its way to the shores of Vancouver Island to rest and feed before heading north to breed in the Arctic. From early March to late April, the festival provides a variety of events for people to connect with nature. And we believe people, especially children who know about nature, will care about nature. In keeping with this mandate, the festival has held a Voices of Nature performance at the Port Theatre for the past two years. This has been made possible by the City of Nanaimo's kind sponsorship. Over 700 children have stood on this marvellous stage, stage and shared their love of nature through the music written by Holly and Kevin. We would like to invite the City of Nanaimo to partner with us for our 2010 Voices of Nature performance. This performance is significant for several reasons. It will take place on April 22nd, which is Earth Day. 2010 is the UN's Year of Biodiversity, and it is the 20th anniversary of the Brant Wildlife Festival. What a fabulous opportunity for the community of Nanaimo to celebrate music, nature, and youth. We are seeking $3,000 in financial sponsorship from the City of Nanaimo for this special program. And without this support, the concert will not be possible. Thank you for your consideration. And in appreciation of this opportunity to speak this evening, I would like to give the City of Nanaimo a copy of our anniversary book, Celebrating Land Conservation in British Columbia. <coughs> Thank you very much.
Can I assume this is the whole school here, or is anyone left? That uh, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> Good. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the council chambers the children of Seaview Elementary. Children to write about the songs, what they mean to them, so their words are what you're about to hear. Hi, I am Claire Thomas, and we are going to sing a song called I Am the Future. I like this song because it makes me think that if everybody does just one thing to help, then our future could be a lot better. My name is Morgan Burke. I like this song because of the message it sends to Earth. It has changed me, and I hope it will change you too. Hi, my name is Michaela Robinson. I like this song because it makes me feel happy. When I am sad and I listen to it, it brightens up my day. I also like the beat. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this song. Honorable counselors and mayor, this song is written from the point of view of a child speaking to us adults.
right there, Clifford. Well done. That's it, Scott. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Good for you. Just one very quick word. This concert is a platform for the community to celebrate its sustainability initiatives. And we really request that you, that you network this into the business community. It's a fabulous event, and it needs the support of the business community to help it fly. It's been going on for several years now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, I think um, that sets the new benchmark for grants and aid now for applications. That uh, <laughs> we're seated at the delegation. Move and second. All in favor? Both carried. Well, they did a great job. Um, okay, do we have any delegations now uh, pertaining to the, uh, these are uh, delegations pertaining to agenda items up to 10 minutes, and it's uh, first of all to start with 2010-2014 financial plan. Seeing none, we'll move along um, into uh, the next delegation is Mr. Terry Knight. I believe he's uh, singing from the musical South Pacific. And uh, no, welcome, sir. Uh, you have up to 10 minutes, um, and I believe your subject will be economic development operations. They're still at it, too. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mayor Rattan and uh, council members. I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, make this uh, short presentation to you tonight. I have to tell you, I'm having a little problem here trying to figure out how the heck I could possibly follow that performance, <laughs> but I'm going to give it a whirl. Good for you. I guarantee I won't sing. <laughs> uh, oh, you've heard me try. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> As a businessman and long-term resident of Nanaimo, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my concern regarding the future of our city's economic development office. At the outset, I must declare, just in case anybody has an element of doubt, that I wholeheartedly support the activities past and present of our city's economic development office. I've had the distinct pleasure of working with Ms. Hutchinson as well as previous two development officers and their respected staff members. I consider myself fortunate to have been the beneficiary of their knowledge, advice, and support and to have served with each of them on a variety of economic development related committees over the years. A review of local news media quite dramatically emphasizes that City Council feels it must find a way to minimize looming tax increases in our city. Apparently we now find our community unable to fund its wide range of continuing programs and activities without raising municipal taxes. We can attribute this problem to a number of issues. Cost downloading from the provincial and or federal governments, hidden 2010 Olympics related costs, swimming pool leakage repair costs, maintenance, repair or replacement costs of aging infrastructure, and a whole collection of other municipal services costs. All these issues make great fodder for debate. The truth is, in business terms anyway, the city of Nanaimo has apparently determined that it has a cash flow problem, real or perceived. Often the first question raised in this situation are, where can we save money? What can we cut? Currently, council has determined that our city's economic development office might be a likely financial review target and has asked for a review and report on the activities and benefits of that department. I support council members in making that request. In truth, I'm a bit surprised that all city departments are not routinely required to submit annual review and evaluation reports. My primary concern, however, is with regard to this situation or with regard to this situation is that some of our citizens may not fully appreciate or understand the importance of the economic development office. 
As clearly described in the City of Nanaimo website, the Economic Development Office is a municipal function and works to develop a creative, dynamic and competitive business environment that fosters economic growth. The office leads and mobilizes the community, local agencies, organizations and businesses to develop and implement strategies that will assist in strengthening the local economy. Further, the website states, Nanaimo Economic Development retains, expands, and attracts new business development opportunities by providing information and support for businesses, advancing local projects that strengthen the economy, and providing background research and policy direction for city staff and council. Taken together, those statements could be used as a description for the marketing department in virtually any private corporation. Therein lies the crux of my concern. How many vibrant and successful private corporations, when faced with insufficient revenues and cash flow problems, would actually consider reducing or possibly eliminating their marketing department? I suspect, in fact, they would exert all efforts towards funding an increased marketing effort. Increased marketing results in increased sales. Increased sales results in increased revenues. The City of Nanaimo is, in fact, a corporation, a public corporation. The Mayor is the Chairman of the Board. Congratulations, Chairman. Thank you. Um, and you folks as Council Members form the Board of Directors, all elected by the shareholders, or in this case, the taxpayers. The City Manager is the Chief Executive Officer and the corporate structure flows down from there. The corporation of the city of Nanaimo is a service company, in fact. It provides a wide range of services to its clients who, as it happens, are also its shareholders. So there we have it, a corporation that is faced with a common business problem, insufficient revenues to support the ongoing delivery of its services. The question you, as the Board of Directors, must answer is, what are we going to do about it? I believe there's two realist or three realistic options. One is to cut back on some or all of the services delivered. Two, raise the price of the services, increase taxes. Three, <coughs> increase the client base, attract more businesses and residents. Tough choices indeed. However, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. In my opinion, and I hope in yours, option one is simply a non-starter. That makes the task just a little bit easier and leaves us with the last two options. In my, or, sorry, personally I would like to see a well-planned and thought-out combination of options number two and number three. This is a call to action, folks. And I don't just mean for Nanaimo City Council, I mean to the citizens of Nanaimo. We're all part of this. This is a call to action. During the past several years, we have worked hard and made significant investments in our city in order to develop an infrastructure and environment that will prove attractive to business and beneficial to our growth and economy. <coughs> Council members, I urge you to unite in supporting the efforts of our Economic Development Office in realizing its vision to develop and implement strategies and build a stronger economic environment for the benefit of all of the residents of our city. Our city's Economic Development Office is a professional, responsive, and valuable resource to both existing and potential business enterprises. In what Bruce Williams of A Channel, one of our city's best marketing agents, has described as a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the delegation? 
Who received the delegation? Uh, just before we do, I just want to thank you uh, for your uh, your time on that, Mr. Knight. And um, obviously, you are very well known um, in uh, commercial circles uh, with the company you've had that's very successful. Um, we certainly um, do appreciate. I can only speak for myself, obviously, one out of nine votes. But uh, I see the need um, for economic development and and the continued operations. Uh, and I don't really think there should be concern at this point. It's every department we're looking at, and that's just one of them too. But I see the value of it, and I appreciate your, your comments. Thank you very much, sir. Those are welcome comments. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next delegation we have is... Oh, sorry. Move and receive. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Catch it. The uh, next delegation is from the Greater Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce regarding information only report providing information on the city's economic development operations. Uh, welcome, sir. Hello, good evening, Your Worship, Council Members, staff. My name is Walter Anderson. I'm the President of the Greater Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here to represent uh, the Chamber of Commerce in support of the Economic Development Office. Uh, it's our opinion that the Economic Development Office is essential to the future of our city. To continue to finance the city and keep it sustainable, we must continuously improve our revenue base, and we can only do that by creating jobs, be they industry, service, or retail sectors. The marketing arm of our city and industry is the Economic Development Office. In the competitive, ar in, in the competitive environment, we must sell ourselves to others to attract attention and ultimately have them invest and locate in Nanaimo. This grows our economic base. Our economic development office is an essential tool to do this. It's our, uh, it's our understanding, with the office funded through the city budget, every tax dollar expended for the activities provides a 100% return to the city, not to the surrounding communities. In our opinion, in reviewing the report from the economic development office and a list of activities, these are essential activities for a city to carry out in our future, for our future. The Economic Development Office is equally helpful to existing biz businesses, both in sustaining business and in growth. The tax dollars, as we understand, expanded on economic development equate to a marketing budget as like any other business. We see our city as a business and must have a supporting revenue stream to provide these services. With the investment in expanding our airport, our new cruise ship terminal, and the Vancouver Island Conference Centre, the Economic Development Office is essential to the support of these initiatives and capitalize on these investments. The Chamber of Commerce urges the City to continue enthusiastic support for the Economic Development Office, funding for the economic development, funding for the economic develop, excuse me, sorry again, funding for economic develop is essential to the services the Economic Development Office provides. It is well known that this office is routinely the first line of contact for outsiders interested in our city. I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to express our wholeheartedly support for the Economic Development Office. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any, we have a couple of questions before you leave. Sir, the first one is uh, Councillor Sherry. To you, Mr. Chairman, to the delegation. <coughs> We uh, fund this department through our business licenses. As the Chamber, should we need additional funds to continue on with this department? Is the Chamber of Commerce in support of, of increasing, not great, but increasing business license to assist in the funding of this organization? Well, I believe, and it would be, uh, obviously, as we increase and attract more businesses to Nanaimo, that, that will definitely increase in the number of business licenses and encourage more businesses to move to our community. The question, the question is, is the current businesses that pay the business license fee now, are they prepared to uh, contribute additional funds towards this fu function? Yes, it would increase the number of businesses that would come to the 
but it also increased the productivity of the department? Well, I can uh, only say that as a business owner, I would definitely support that if that meant Thank you. that we would improve. That's something obviously the Chamber Board would want to consider and maybe at some point, if necessary, come back with an opinion on that. Next, uh, Councillor Holden. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I thought that was a good answer to a good question, uh, that if we increase the number of businesses, we automatically increase the revenues. Um, but I have to ask you, of course, uh, the more general question. Um, does the Chamber have a position on uh, the uh, level of our t uh, current taxation in the city. Um, do you find that the level of taxation municipally is uh, high or acceptable or where would you place it? Well every year we, uh, we do participate in the in the budget and um, it's uh, a part of our mandate. The chamber doesn't necessarily support increasing taxes but we certainly do uh, are, are in support of um, using those taxes to, to the best use as possible. I hope that answers your question. Uh, not, qu not quite. <clears throat> so, so you're not asking us then this year to uh, necessarily reduce taxes, especially if it meant uh, cutting services like the Economic Development Office. Is that your position? Well, I, I don't believe that uh, we see it um, as uh, reducing taxes uh, is, is, is an option to um, reducing very valuable services. I think um, the level of taxes here is, uh, have been in the past have, have changed. We understand how that works. Uh, so um, we certainly are in support of uh, what the city is doing and with the Economic Development Office and, and if, it, if it requires uh, uh, adjusting the taxes then we would certainly will be open to, to discuss that in further. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Anderson. I, um, and I just want to comment um, that uh, actually to you and, and um, also to Mr. Knight that uh, we are in the process of uh, restructuring our committees right now. And I can tell you that uh, we are establishing a brand new uh, Economic Development Commission. Uh, which will incorporate, uh, obviously, uh, economic development itself. Um, and the chairman will be myself as the mayor, and uh, we will have other members on that as well. Uh, we see this as a very important uh, commission, and we intend to mark it, and I'm with the very best of our ability. So uh, your words aren't lost. Thank you very much, sir. Can we get a move? We'll receive another delegation. Second? Second. All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Appreciate your time, sir. Yes, good. Um, the uh, last delegation we have is Mr. Fred Taylor, 204 Emory Way, regarding minutes of the 2009 December 14 regular council meeting. Mr. Taylor. Mayor Rattan and council members. Council meeting of December the 14th, 2009, adopted bylaw 7084, our cemetery bylaw. Request was made by delegation to the council to recognize four other cemeteries within the city as well as to correct the size of Bowen Road Cemetery. Following the December 14, 2009 meeting, Mr. Hickey advised the mayor and council by email addressed to myself, I was wrong on the size of Bowen Cemetery, which I claimed was 16 plus acres. Claiming bylaw 7084 was correct 10 point plus acres. After providing copy of title searches of the city of these properties provided by the city of Nanaimo, proving in my opinion 16 plus acres, no further email followed of explanation of why the city claims by bylaw one third less the area. Wouldn't it be proper to agree with me or tell me why I'm wrong? Also of great concern is the late filing of the cemetery application for license renewal with the provincial government, which was required by June 30th, 2009, received by the provincial government October 9th, 2009, and the issue before the council December 14th, 2009 for adoption, two months after filing with the provincial government. The timing of events clearly indicates council could only rubber stamp 
the actions of staff without opportunity to correct or amend because it was already a provincial government some time ago. I ask again for the four cemeteries to be recognized and Bowen changed to the correct size or acreage and those records at Victoria. In my opinion, council has to be proactive and direct management. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from uh, staff on that? And if not, we will just uh, receive the delegation. We'll receive. Staff has all prepared to discuss this with Fred Taylor during working hours tomorrow morning. This uh, information that he's presented tonight is all new, of course, to me tonight. So um, I'm, I wasn't aware of these issues, and I'm, certainly staff are more than prepared to discuss them in the morning. Thank you. The, the, the whole story, Mr. Chairman, or Mayor of Town, has been by email to the uh, council members, and I know goes to the uh, head of staff. So what I'm discussing is all knowledge <coughs> inner to the City Hall. And I believe a bylaw for you to adopt and discuss needs to come before Council before it goes anywhere else. Why should it go to the provincial government October the 9th? Okay, well. Two months before you've seen it, or it, it to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Your Worship, I just... Yeah, oh, you on here? Okay. Go ahead, Councilor Bessard. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for the information. Uh, with respect to the proposed meeting to take place at some time in the future, with those issues and concerns raised by Mr. Taylor, would it be possible to have uh, a report back to Council specifically related to the issues discussed with staff in that meeting? Yeah, I think that was my understanding that, that uh, staff would look at that issue and get back to us. Uh, well, if that's what council would like, we can provide a response to council. Yes, I would wish to uh, re make that request. Okay. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And receipt of the delegation. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you. Um, we're going to uh, move into mayor's report and down into uh, committee reports. And uh, um, Councillor uh, Kip will give us the Social Planning Advisory Committee uh, 2010 Social Development Grants. Well, Councillor Kip. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd like to move that Council allocate the following to, uh, 2010, and we'll stutter on that one, uh, Social Development Grants. Uh, firstly, Volunteer Nanaimo will be the sponsor of the development of a community dental clinic for Nanaimo. The amount requested was 45000 uh, The committee recommends 35000 Nanaimo Food Chair Society sponsoring the Good Food Box program. They requested 12500 and the amount recommended is 9000 Loaves and Fishes Community Bank is an organization to sponsor Food for You and an Eggs program. Uh, for 14500 was the request, and they've been recommended amount for $9,000. And the Nanaimo Community Kitchen Society is the organization sponsoring a low-cost cooking for health. They requested $8,000, and the committee recommends a grant of $7,000. Second motion. Okay, it's moved and seconded. It's on the floor. Discussion. We have Councillor Unger first, and then I think Councillor Sherry is there. Councillor Unger? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I look at this list, and uh, we have another situation where we have the provincial government downloading on the city uh, a service and it's a very vital, necessary service to the, some of the citizens of our community, and that's the dental clinic for the, basically for the homeless people in the city, and it's $35,000. But this type of service, which is a social uh, service, is the responsibility of the provincial government, and uh, I just note that it's started to become a habit. One after the other, they're downloading on us, and then and we have to pick up the tab for it, and they get away scot-free. Thank you. Councillor Sherry. Just, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think if, uh, if Councillor Kipp would uh, inform the general public the source of these funds, uh, it's not out of taxation. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Your Worship. 
The funds for this come from gaming funds. Um, the social development grants or the social uh, planning committee grants are um, asked for allocations and advertised in October. And the money does, as Councillor Sherry uh, said, comes through from gaming funds. So it's not directly from taxation, although some would say that gaming in itself is a form of taxation. Um, the dental clinic itself, I'd like to just say, it's intended for people who do not have access or in the fact that they just won't even have the ability to possibly go. It's a walk-in clinic. It's primarily to provide uh, emergency care, um, uh, pain management, typically abscesses and that. Um, there's discussions with Vancouver Island University, the dental hygienists are coming in, the dental community is donating equipment, and this is seed funding for a year to two years of operating a clinic, three to five days a month currently. Uh, all volunteer staffing from our local dentists, certified dental assistants, dental hygienists. So I totally agree with what Councillor Unger has said. Um, we are trying to work harder with the provincial government, and this is one of the things that they don't. Uh, MSP doesn't cover uh, dental for a lot of people and I know some people may have access to it but other communities like Kamloops, Victoria, Vancouver, Prince George have modeled this. They've selected the best of all of those and are trying to make it function here. Some funds will be billed back to pay and keep an ongoing thing because for example the federal government pays for some fees, um, First Nations or Aboriginal costs can be involved and, it, and so does welfare pay for some of these things that can be billed back. So although it sounds like a lot, it is a, a primarily very very um, health-oriented issue for our community, ultimately important. So I, I do support the issues that are before us on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kippen. I might just add that, um, really, and just reiterate what you said, it's, it's the donation of time by our dentists and the dental hygienists in this community that make this possible, and, and a big thank you to them and everyone else involved who volunteers their time. And we have Councillor Holdem next. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, I want to support the recommendations from the committee, uh, partly as a past chairman of the Social Planning Advisory Committee. I know how much it takes to work through the applications and to uh, struggle to make these recommendations. Um, I'd like to just say that I too, like uh, Councillor Unger and others, uh, am opposed to direct downloading from the provincial government for uh, responsibilities that they're supposed to be carrying. But I can't imagine the provincial government providing this service at this cost. I think there are some things that local government does better than the senior levels of government. This might very well be one of them. And it may be much better for us to seek revenue sources from the provincial government, such as tax points or direct grants, uh, so that we can carry out these functions rather than uh, simply refusing to do them and uh, trying to get the provincial government to pick up its responsibilities. Uh, I, I think we can do some of these things better, and this is probably one of them. I totally agree. Councillor Johnstone. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. As uh, um, Councillor Councillor Kip mentioned today earlier, uh, the this is a one-time, not necessarily to be funded every year from this social planning advisory committee. Uh, yes, Your Worship, through to Councillor Johnson, it is a seed funding base seed for it uh, to start up the initial uh, cost to get some equipment that can't be donated and those to start the clinic up. And they believe that depending on how quickly or rapidly the clientele builds for this service is how quickly the money will be used. They estimate a minimum of a year's service, possibly further into the next year with this specific funding, and they will come back to let us know how it's going. Thank you. Councillor uh, Patchy. Thank you, Worship. A question to Councillor Kibb. Can you tell us how many people roughly will be served by this on a monthly or an annual basis? Um, it, it's a walk-in clinic. Um, they don't have an exact number now, but from their statistical information, it's quite a volume. It, it, it encompasses not only those on welfare, the, um, but those in the homeless shelters, as Councillor um, Unger had put out, um, a lot of the people from the Harris Health Clinic and those type of issues. Some of the kids that are absolutely homeless or in our low-cost housing will be able to access it. Also, people with mental illnesses that don't like going to clinics and those type of things, formal clinics, because they feel bad about... Um, being able to ask for free services, it will help facilitate them, and there'll be recommendations from other social service groups steering people towards the clinic. So I don't have the exact numbers, but the, the short answer is I believe there's quite a, a volume of people that can use the mm -hmm. service. And a follow-up, if I may, yes. Your Worship. How do you reach out to homeless people to, to tell them about the facility? 
Yeah, well, so. we wouldn't exactly, but the group, Volunteer Nanaimo, oh, who is the sponsor organization, working with the funding, uh, the, the dental hygienists and the dentists that are involved, yes, and our social the, workers the, through sure. VHA, yeah, will be steering cl people towards the clinic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just uh, for housekeeping, uh, Councillor Kip, did you, and if you haven't, would you uh, move the committee recommendation that Council approve the following, etc.? Yes. I have moved that. I will move You're it. Done, and move that, we yes. seconded? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Almost like going to the dentist there. <laughs> Okay, we're going into uh, development services, uh, development cost charge relief for uh, Telecom Lelum affordable housing. Uh, staff recommendation the council authorizes expenditure of $115,906 from the housing legacy fund to provide relief for the development cost charges associated with the Telecom Lelum affordable housing project on 10th Street. Um, okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion on this one? I would like to just... Okay, go ahead. Councilor Kip. Um, I've talked to some of our people from our social planning committee again, and this type of funding has leveraged a phenomenal amount of money in Nanaimo. This um, possibly with the triggers of us giving these type of benefits to the affordable housing gives the provincial government money to us and I think it is right now if I can check with staff some forty five million dollars coming our way from these type of initiatives. So I just appreciate that type of uh, uh, capitalization on a, on a ratio. Thank you. Okay, I might just add, sorry? Huh? I might just add that um, just a few points that uh, staff uh, provided um, earlier in the day. Uh, this is the first site under the city's housing first strategy adopted by council in July 2008. Uh, the 10th Street project is uh, being developed by the Telecom Lalem Aboriginal Friendship Society and part of the MOU with the province of BC through BC Housing, which was signed in November 2008. Mr. Coleman has announced that BC Housing will provide $14.95 million in funding for two housing projects, uh, Telecom Lalem and the Wesley Street one, which is the city's first site to be developed under the MOU. So there's some more background information, but this has been an ongoing strategy that has been developed with the province of British Columbia, and uh, I think all of Council are supportive of the issue, and I think it's important uh, for the Telecom Lalem uh, affordable housing, which I see is a very important step forward. Um, question. question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, DVP 150 um, at 4606 Laguna Way. Staff recommendation the Council direct staff to proceed with the required statutory notification for development variance permit number DVP 150 at 4606 Laguna Way. Move the staff recommendation. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, <coughs> item LA46, entertainment endorsement for the food primary liquor license rendezvous restaurant, 489 Wallace Street. Staff recommendation that Council 1 not support the application to extend the closing hours of liquor service from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Monday through Sunday, and 2 not support the application to allow patron participation entertainment in the food primary licensed area. Um, Move the staff recommendation to get it on the floor. Okay. Move and second to have it on the floor. Discussion. Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is one where we are in a no-win situation. We don't make the decisions. That's done by the liquor distribution branch uh, of the provincial government. But we seem to stand here and stick out our chest and catch all the flack for all these decisions. And this one is a classic example. It's seeking a half-hour extension to 12.30, and yet we have 13 establishments downtown uh, with the liquor primary licenses uh, at 1 or even 2 a.m., uh, so they're even later than the one that's applied for. Of those seven, uh, have liquor sales till 1 a.m. or later. In the rest of the city, there's 35 establishments closing at 1 or later, with five having liquor sales till 1 a.m. or later. Really, this is all over the map. It's a dog's breakfast, and it's a liquor distribution branch's decision in the end. And... I am aware of already some others who plan to make applications for extensions, and we're sitting catching all the flack. So uh, we do have the option of uh, uh, opting right out 
of these decisions and leave it strictly to the liquor distribution branch who makes the final decision anyway regardless of what we say and uh, if uh, we can defeat the recommendations then I would want to move that we opt out. Um, there's a motion on the floor right now. We'll have to deal with that first. We have two more speakers. Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. Um, I think there's a little bit more to um, what Councillor Unger alluded to, which is that we are being requested to make a change um, for this food primary liquor license because of the, the physical layout of this particular establishment. And to my mind, that is not a good reason at all to even consider it on that basis. Uh, if you have an establishment with one entrance, there's not enough of a division between the two entities, then uh, that is the applicant's problem, it's not ours. And um, so I'll just go ahead with, the, um, uh, with supporting the staff recommendation. I, I think to opt out at this point does not send the message that we should be sending. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Beswick. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I was just wishing to express um, similar uh, thoughts as Councillor Patchy as it relates to the single entrance and the physical layout and the other um, B establishments that are food primaries that would probably open uh, the floodgates for more opportunities for us to opt out. And I'm more in, uh, in line with uh, us having a little bit more control over what our uh, licensing situations are within our downtown and uh, I agree with Councillor Unger it is a dog's breakfast we do have closing times um, all over the map and I think that we've been responsible for many of those closing times changing for in some cases for the better or the suggestion that it would be better to have staggered closing times uh, for different establishments and different licenses so with staff's recommendation uh, I would um, support the staff and the motion that's on the floor. Okay, I don't see um, any other further questions. I might just add myself that um, I have received a number of calls from other uh, restaurants that um, have indicated that if we did uh, grant an extension on this particular application, uh, which is a uh, food primary license, they would immediately uh, follow with their request, and I'm afraid that's going to open a floodgate, as someone else mentioned earlier, uh, with a whole series of them. And, and so... Um, I find it challenging as well, and I think it's just unfortunate that we're even in this position time after time. But, um, uh, you know, under the circumstances, I'm going to have a problem supporting the recommendation. And having said that, oh, we've got two more in the meantime. Councillor Kip. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I kind of, I mean, this is an interesting issue. We got that liquor study again, and I'd love to see a liquor study or us sit down as a council and talk about where we want these strategies to go. I totally understand Council Unger's frustration with dealing with these issues where we get stuck with them. There's fights between our neighbours. There's fights between businesses over this. uh, It's constant conflict. I understand the thing to opt out, but I'd rather take charge of it and see if we can sit down. I don't want to put us down to another meeting sometime and have input from a few of the bar, like select a key informants in the bar business and get some information because it just seems to be all over the map and it's policing costs, social issues. Um, We still do have one of the highest levels of drunk driving in British Columbia. That either means we have a really good police force that are catching people, but they're out there, right? Somehow it's working. And I'd love to see us sit down and do a liquor study or revive the Nelson Welsh report and review it. So I, can't su- I can support the staff's recommendations here, almost a freeze on what's going on. So thank you. Okay, Councillor Holden. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just looking at the uh, staff report, uh, pages uh, 47 in particular, um, I note that uh, we did consider, and I'm just speaking to the motion now, although I would support opting out if we get to that, um, uh, Near the top of the page, the first paragraph that starts on that page, it notes that uh, we received a similar application from Men's uh, Men's Avino's restaurant and uh, we chose to support the entertainment endorsement but not the extension of uh, hours of liquor service request. Um, So that might be an option and maybe we can vote on these seriatim. 
The other one is uh, under the bullet as in the next section, it's the impact on the community if the application is approved. Um, and uh, in that section it says, if approved, the application will add another entertainment venue into Nanaimo's already vibrant downtown. Now, it appears to me that vibrant is a positive word and that uh, we actually are trying to, uh, to, to encourage vitality and vibrancy in the downtown. So if this would add to it, is that not a good thing? The downtown Nanaimo partnership does not object to the application, it says. Um, and there are partners on matters like this, I suppose. Then uh, later it says that uh, in staff's interpretation, as they go through the hours, uh, this policy would apply to liquor to licensed restaurants, the closing at 1.30 a.m. As such, the proposed extension of liquor service to 1 a.m. will not contravene this policy. So um, we're not contravening our own policy. We're adding to the vibrancy of downtown, and we've done it already, uh, in part at least, with another restaurant. So I'm not sure why we're getting a recommendation to refuse this. I see that the RCMP is opposed, but they routinely oppose any extension of, of liquor service because of the problems that uh, liquor service pr uh, creates. So one would expect that. But I think we're, trying to, we're looking at the community here and what the community's interests are. And it would seem to me that, uh, well, I can't support the staff recommendation, but I would at least ask that we vote on it seriatim. Okay, and so it shall be. Councillor Unger? I uh, went over the entire list. We have 89 food primary licensed establishments in Nanaimo, 48 of them open 1 a.m. or later, and 41 uh, midnight or earlier. So the uh, plurality, uh, or actually the majority, uh, do have later uh, closing hours 1 a.m. or later and uh, uh, I, I just think we have to have a, a equal fair playing field for everybody involved because you get one has one set of rules another has another set of rules as um, Councillor Holden mentioned the Manzavino uh, restaurant uh, we did not extend their hours but we did give them permission to add entertainment and as uh, Councillor Holden said I would definitely like to see these added uh, voted on separately so we can possibly uh, approve the entertainment section if uh, the later hours uh, are not acceptable. And we will vote in that manner. Councillor Johnstone. Yes, Your Worship. I'd be prepared to support the uh, entertainment component as we did that with Monsevinios. However, you know, if, if we follow the uh, wise advice of the Nielsen Welsh Consulting Corp study in 2002, it definitely says that Council not endorse any extension to hours of liquor service for food primary licensed establishments. And I'm not, I'm not sure why we would commission studies and reports if we don't want to follow their guidelines. Okay. Councillor Sherry. Well, Mr. Chairman, one looks at the background information that we have before us. And in the background, they show a petition. I support or I don't support I could only see one that's been presented to us today that says I support and all the rest I do not support. So, you know, what program are we on? Okay, well, I think we're at the point of question here. Um, so uh, we'll do these ones individually. Um, staff recommendation, um, which will be item C11 or 11C if you wish, that uh, and uh, subsection 1, um, staff recommendation that council not support the application to extend the closing hours of liquor service from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Monday through Sunday. All in favor? Opposed? So I see Councillors uh, Unger, Holdem, and uh, Councillor McNabb, uh, sorry, uh, opposed, the balance of council in favour, uh, the motion passes. Um, and on the second item, on two, um, the uh, council recommendation is not to support the application to allow patrons participation uh, within the food primary uh, license area. And I'll call for a vote on that one. All those that would not support the application? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, sorry? 
In favor, in favor of staff's recommendation. Well, staff recommendations that not be supported. So how many support staff's recommendation that, they, that you not support the application to allow patron participation? So in favor of staff's recommendation. In favor, the first one is, is uh, the staff recommendation, which says no. And the second one is in favor of staff's recommendation. That's correct. So the first go round is no. Those in favor of no. Um, we have uh, one, two, three, four. Um, Councillor, we have uh, Councillor Kip, Councillor Sherry. Councillor Beswick and Councillor Patchy uh, in the negative. Um, and then we'll call for those in favor. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. Balance of Council uh, is in favor. So the uh, motion um, is denied, and uh, that will allow um, support for the application to allow the patron participation um, entertainment within the food primary license area. So uh, yes to the partis. Excuse me? So, let's start with that. Uh, the application to allow patron participation entertainment within the food primary license area of this application be approved. It has to be a positive yep. motion. Who's seconding that? Second. Second? Okay, um, this is now for the affirmative to allow par patron participation. All in favor? Opposed? We have uh, the same vote, I believe. Councillor uh, Padgey, Councillor Beswick, Councillor um, Sherry, and Councillor Unger. Kip. Oh, Kip, I'm sorry. Opposed, balance the council in favor. So uh, the motion. <laughs> the motion passes. Okay, we'll move along to um, item D, um, number one, Commercial Street. Par Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? You're opposed, are you? Yes. Okay, we have, um, we show that uh, Council Holdem opposed, balance the Council in favor, the motion passes. Um, we'll go into illegal grow operation, item E, 2105 Bowen Road, is requested that Councillor, anyone uh, wishing to speak with respect to an illegal grow operation at 2105 Bowen Road? Anyone in attendance uh, from 2105? Not that I expected to see of hands out there. Move the staff recommendation. Second Move and second, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, into uh, the next item, which is G F has been pulled. We'll go into G, and it's RA 228 Shadow Mountain Road. Uh, PNAX recommendation that Council approve the application and the staff recommendation that Council 1 receive the report pertaining to zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2009 number 4000.466 which is present under the bylaw section of this agenda and 2 direct staff to register a covenant uh, to secure the proposed community contribution design elements and to restrict the use of the property to single family dwelling until such time as the property is substantially redeveloped in accordance with the development plan. What's your pleasure? On, I, on 1 and 2? Okay. Is there a seconder? Okay, move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We're going to go into uh, Howard Avenue, RA 229, um, 894 Howard Avenue. Staff recommendation um, is that Council receive the report pertaining to zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2010 number 4000.473, uh, which is presented under the bylaw section of this agenda. And two, direct staff to secure the community contribution and register covenant to uh, secure general building design, fence height, restriction, and development cost charges. What's your pleasure on that? Okay. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, on the next one here on Bruce. Okay. Yeah, you worked your back here. Yeah, so if the record could show uh, that Councillor McNabb is absenting himself on a perceived conflict of interest. We'll now deal with RA 232 888 Bruce Avenue, staff recommendation um, that Council receive the report pertaining to a proposed amendment to an existing restrictive use covenant to replace the requirement that a community building be provided on the subject property for the Harewood Community Project Society with a requirement for the community contribution of $60,000 to be used for a priority project in the Harewood area and two, direct staff to forward the item to the next uh, scheduled public hearing as per Council's policy. Moved. Is there a seconder? Moved and second. All in favor? Oh, oh sorry. You're on there now. Councillor Sherry. Uh, to you, Mr. Chairman, to staff. When the rezoning and the development of this property came before the council a day or two before ago, there was the offer of a lot and a building to be built as their community contribution. Is that correct? 
Your Worship, the offer was as set out in the report, um, and that's what we're varying. It was to build the community center. I mean, at that time, because of the offer of the, the property and the building, there was no request or no report given to the Council of the Day as it relates to the need for uh, parks, uh, additional park space in that particular area. Is that correct? Uh, Your Worship, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't doubt Councillor Sherry's memory. Um, I can only confirm that what was actually offered and what Council accepted was as set out in the report for the community centre. Okay. The, the, where I'm going on this thing here now is that under normal circumstances, we ask the developer X number of dollars per door or whatever it is, and if there's a, a identified as a need for uh, playgrounds or, or the likes in that uh, particular area, then we also request a park in lieu as well. Okay. And, and it's unfortunate that at this particular time, and lots of water under the bridge, is that uh, the offer of a building plus lot was offered. And I think the, the community was acceptable at the day. But it's taken a quite a while to do it. Now, my concern here is now they're offering a $60,000 contribution to the area. What is the, the dollar value of that piece of property uh, that is uh, going to be made available to them uh, rather than to the community. So it's just a, a matter of uh, uh, equity as to what's up and what's down. Just want to bring this, that to your attention. Okay. Do you want? Do you need an answer now, or are you going to? If uh, the staff want to comment on this at this point, uh, your worship. I know. Um, in this particular case, um, there is no separate property that was part of the community contribution that council accepted. Uh, so staff worked with the developer to establish what the value of the community center would be in terms of a, a monetary contribution instead of building the uh, the community center and we came up with the sixty thousand uh, dollars we believe that's a fair offer uh, we certainly i couldn't tell you the number of units but if we took the four hundred dollars per door it would likely be somewhere in the neighborhood of two or twenty thousand dollars so this is probably more than you would typically typically get under a multi-family development albeit this has some commercial zoning as well Thank you. The, the only point that I would make, Mr. Swaby, is that we were uh, offered a piece of land plus the building for the association to do what's being offered now. We don't have the land. They're going to maintain the land, the development company, and they're offering the $60,000. That's all I say. And for a lot today, uh, that's a very reasonable, inexpensive contribution. Your Worship, you. Your Worship, just to clarify, the, the building was to be built on the property um, that they're developing. There was no separate lot associated with this. There. Have you followed? No, let's just forget about it. Okay, Council Hall. <coughs> well, I, th I think the discussion we're just having is a good reason to send it to public hearing to see if the community, uh, uh, especially the Harewood community, has uh, continuing interest in this. I just wanted to ask if the Covenant um, specifically mentioned the uh, Harewood Community Project Society? Does That's it, correct. Which is now dissolved, so there, it's an inoperable covenant in any event, right? That's right. And the letter of support comes from the Harewood Neighborhood Association. Yes. So that's, I, I think it's worth sending to public hearing, Your Worship. And that's all we're deciding here. Okay. Question on the motion. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, and that, that does include item one and two that we voted on, so this will also direct staff to forward the item to the uh, next scheduled public hearing, which I think was the intent. Um, unresolved uh, building deficiencies, and um, well, yeah, maybe Mr. Councillor Best, right? Wrong door. Wrong door. 
Uh, if you're if you're going in the other door, guess who's behind the next door? Uh, if you, seriously, <laughs> could you let in? Could you get in? Not, it might be a tiger or Mr. McNabb, and they might be both the same. If, <laughs> Councillor Padgett, could you let uh, the gentleman in, please? <laughs> anyway, who's lost? <laughs> They're both lost. <laughs> lost a pile of them. Okay, the numbers are dwindling, but we're still carrying on here. Um, as long as we've got a quarrel. Unresolved building efficiencies, notice on title section 57. Uh, it is requested that council here, anyone wishing to speak with respect to unresolved building deficiencies slash illegal suites for the properties listed below. Um, and uh, the staff recommendations that council by resolution instruct the director of legislative services to file a bylaw contravention notice respecting the properties listed below at the land title and survey authority in British Columbia under section 57 of the community charter. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to matters related to 185 Calder Road. Is there anyone here that would speak to matters uh, regarding 1213 1213 Thunderbird Drive? Um, 2350 Autumnwood Drive. Willow uh, Mobile Home Park, 101 uh, Nanaimo Lakes Road. Anyone in attendance for uh, 133 uh, McEwen Place? Uh, for number 70, uh, McClary Street? 6217 Shoreline Drive? 410 Milford Crescent? Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item unresolved building efficiencies notice on title um, with respect to um, 2105 Bowen Road. Anyone here that would like to speak to matters regarding 2105 Bowen Road? It's uh, hearing none. If somebody would like to make the motion. Okay, is there a seconder? Moved and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, we're getting down to um, item. Um, L, uh, expropriation of part of 2901 Hammond Bay Road and part of 2915 Hammond Bay Road. Um, staff recommendation that uh, Council 1 adopt the attached resolution as described in Schedule 1, authorizing and approving the expropriation of part of 2901 Hammond Bay Road and 2, adopt the attached resolution as described in Schedule 2, authorizing and approving the expropriation of part of 2915 Hammond Bay Road. Move the staff recommendations. Second Move and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, Central Vancouver Island uh, Multicultural Society MOU staff recommendation that Council ratify the attached memorandum of understanding uh, or MOU. Move the recommendation. Okay, seconded. Okay, all in favor? No, I want to speak on that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I would uh, like to hear from staff so the viewers can understand that we're ratifying a memorandum and we don't say what it's about or what the intent is so if we could have a very brief explanation I think would be Your totally question. Yep. Yes. Just came on the agenda tonight. I know Is anyone going to attach that? To the uh, Your Worship this is uh, a, a memorandum of understanding between the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police uh, School District 68 uh, Sinamo First Nation the uh, United Way, Central North, North Vancouver Island, Vancouver Island University, Central Vancouver Island Multicultural Society, the City of Nanaimo, Community Futures, the Chamber of Commerce, Haven Society, and the Nanaimo, Duncan and District Labor Council. And it's really just a protocol that we ensure that people are treated fairly and uh, being accepted into the community from all uh, cultures throughout uh, uh, the world. And that's just a general statement about that. Okay. Thank you. Could I just ask, is, is, is this also um, dealing with the name change? Because I understand that there was some discussion on the possible change in the name from multicultural to um, something to uh, immigrant uh, base uh, name. Are we, anyone familiar with that? No, I'm sorry, Your Worship. I'm okay. Not. Um, so the uh, motion's there on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, information only items. Order received the information only items. Motion. Move and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, 
Sorry? Go ahead. Your Worship, now that we've received these, I just uh, <coughs> wanted to comment on the uh, report from uh, Ms. Hutchinson regarding the activities of the Economic Development Department. Uh, it is an exceptionally lengthy, detailed, thorough, and persuasive document, um, and uh, would certainly be of interest to the delegation that we had at the top of the meeting. Good That's, point. Uh, there's uh, a lot of work being done by that department. Yeah, a lot of material in there, too. Good point. Okay, we'll go through the uh, reconsideration of the bylaws and uh, Macdean uh, Mayor, Councillor Sherry. I move that Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw 2009, number 4000.461, as it relates to the property at 6057 Dumont Road, uh, to rezone from uh, subject property from single family RS1 to medium uh, RM5. I move that uh, in order to permit the multifamily development, I move that this bylaw be adopted. I'm tempted to put the... the Sorry? Move it. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the old way. Of course it happened. <laughs> the mayor and the clerk and the, uh, sign the document and the seal of the corporation to fix there, too. So we'll do it in the, in the uh, new prescribed manner. Um, move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I move that the Nanaimo Athletic Commission... Uh, okay, sorry. Just a moment. Uh, if, if the record could show that uh, Councillor Kipp has absented himself uh, on the basis of a perceived conflict of interest. Sorry, go ahead. I move that the Nanaimo Athletic Commission bylaw amendment bylaw 2009 number 7019.01 uh, re replace Schedule A of the Commission fees. I move that this bylaw be adopted. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I move that the user fee subsidy bylaw 2009 number 7095 to provide for a user fee subsidy for those persons deemed to be in special circumstances. I move that this bylaw be adopted. Second motion. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Introduction of development bylaws. I move that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2009. <coughs> Number 4000.466, as it relates to property at 5876 Shadow Mountain Road, uh, residential triplex, quadplex. I move that this bylaw receive its first reading. Second Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I move that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2009, number 4000.466. As previously read, I move that this be passed at second reading. Motion. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Move that zoning bylaw, amendment bylaw 2010, number 4000.473, as it relates to property at 894 Howard Avenue. I move that this bylaw be passed at first reading. Second Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I move the zoning bylaw, amendment bylaw 2010, number 4000.473, be passed at second reading. Second motion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And we move that the uh, receipt of the correspondence. Okay, but, but, um, it's moved and seconded. Before we uh, vote on that, I would just like to make a comment uh, that uh, the letter uh, from um, Ms. Donna Hayes, uh, past president of Great Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce, requesting a letter of support from the city regarding the chamber's efforts to establish a sister city relationship with the Bremerton. Um, so I'd like to get um, a motion from council to agree um, that we are that we can honor their request for a letter of support. And I think at this point, I would like to clarify the fact that this um, is a, basically, it, it does refer to uh, Sister City, in, uh, and which in effect it is, but, but this particular one will be a chamber-to-chamber -chamber relationship, so there is no cost to the city in doing this, and, and um, I certainly will be supporting um, sending a letter of uh, support uh, oh, to the chamber. Well, could okay. we maybe deal with receipt of the correspondence yes. and, and, and then move and then a do. motion of support? Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Now we'll go back. And did you make that motion? Okay. Is it was a seconder? Move and second. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Now we'll um, go into uh, delegations pertaining to items not on the agenda. Um, the uh, oh, but sorry. Maybe one other item since uh, we're going back on on these matters. The letter um, from Ms. Natalie. Um, 
um, act as, I believe, uh, the Public Relations Advisor, ICBC, um, responding to the city's correspondence. Um, what um, we're looking for is, is um, staff, just to an update those that are, that are watching at home and here in the audience, the staff is presently reviewing uh, the internal options um, available for the city to undertake this. Um, however, um, if we're not able to do that, um, then we'll look at uh, external operations such as the uh, service clubs and so on. Um, the, there is an opportunity um, for the IAFF. Uh, the fire department may wish to uh, consider this um, as a community uh, service, um, but uh, their time is limited. They may be, not be able to, and so if the fire department can't, uh, then we will um, see if there's another department within the city, and failing that, uh, we will refer it to uh, outside committees for assistance on it. It's an important program. It deals, obviously, with uh, car seat safety training, and uh, it's one that I very, feel very strong on and want to see uh, continued. Okay, we'll move along to delegations pertaining to items not on the agenda. Up to 10 minutes. Mr. Derek Kirk. Um, Mr. Kirk, you're here in attendance. Welcome, sir. You've uh, got up to 10 minutes. Um, I'm here primarily today to... to um, oh, I'm sorry. My, my name's Derek Kirk. Um, I live at 285 Villa Road. Um, I'm pr here primarily today that I learned my neighbour presented to you a delegation at the last council meeting uh, regarding wood from sm uh, smoke from wood stoves. I'd like to speak to you tonight on the topic of burning at smart uh, on this topic as well as the burning at smart program that uh, the city put on uh, earlier last month, um, as well as uh, uh, the use of wood stoves for heating in the city in Nanaimo and the recent motion uh, to revisit the nuisance bylaw. I live with my wife and four children, as I mentioned, at 285 Villa Road. And last month, much to my surprise, I found out that my neighbour appeared before you and complained about the smoke, the smoke from my wood stove. I found this, first from, uh, found this out first from a friend and then from citizens driving by in their cars and stopping in front of my house. Uh, and then from a newspaper reporter uh, asking for my side of the story. I was quite surprised to hear that my neighbor was complaining about this issue as I have not had a communication, either verbal or written, from him in three years that the smoke from my wood stove was causing his problems. Uh, in fact, about two years ago I initiated a conversation with him on, that very on the very topic of wood smoke in our neighborhood. I asked him at that time if he was still having issues with wood smoke from the neighborhood and he told me that there was no issue at all and he had taken care of the problem. Uh, as the Council is aware, there is an ongoing pro problem between the two households, and I'd like to point out that prior to this neighbour purchasing the home and moving in, I'd never met a bylaw officer before, and now I'm sad to say that I probably know them all by name. Um, we purchased our wood stove four and a half years ago. It was professionally installed by a wet certified installer. Uh, it was installed at a location that best suited our home. It was a high efficiency stove. Um, the chimney inside is a double-walled chimney. The outside is a stainless steel insulated chimney. Um, it's located more than 25 feet from my neighbor's house. And uh, as far as I understand, the insulation exceeds all the standards set out by the province of British Columbia. Um, I have um, attended the Burn It, Strike, uh, Burn it Smart uh, workshop and found it to be a wealth of information with regards to the correct operation of a wood-burning stove. Uh, with regards to burning, I did learn a few things I didn't know about, and I was reassured on a number of things that I did know about. Uh, as an example, I cut all my wood from the local wood lots that are managed by the fishing, local fishing game club. Um, the wood from these lots are typically harvested a year or two before, so they've had time to dry out. When I do harvest it, it's usually in uh, March and April. I split and stack it, and I let it season over the summertime. So um, by the time October comes around, it's pretty well seasoned. When October comes around, uh, comes around and it starts to rain, I cover it with a tarp to ensure that it stays dry. Uh, when I start a fire, I, I, I can use kindling small pieces of wood to allow the, the wood to, the stove to heat up quickly. In about five, you know, anywhere between 10, five and 10 minutes, the wood stove is up to temperature and there is no smoke coming from my chimney. When I add wood, I reopen the, the damper, add the wood, and give it a chance to, to kick in. And usually there's very little to no smoke that happens. Uh, as, a, as a result of burning clean dry wood and following the protocol that's set out by the Burning It Smart program, 
uh, you rarely will see smoke from my chimney. Again, it only happens when I first initially start up and maybe a little bit when, uh, when you add a little bit of wood. Additionally, um, because of that, uh, I only have to clean my chimney once a year, and when I do so, there's very little soot, um, maybe half a cup at the very most, and that's scrubbing it right down. Uh, I do follow the burning at smart protocol exactly, and I do burn clean. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, when we bought this home 18 years ago, we also noticed the smell of smoke in the area, um, probably because of my neighbor as well on the other side of the house. She burns as well. <clears throat> We, uh, in order to fix this problem, we had professionals come into our home and assess it. Uh, they came up with a number of recommendations, uh, and we followed most of them. We replaced all our single-pane windows with double-pane thermal windows. We ensured that the air grab around the windows was sealed uh, and insulated. Uh, we increased the insulation in our attics, in our crawl space, and uh, we just basically generally made sure that our house was, uh, was uh, airtight. Uh, we've never smelled, even though I do burn, burn wood, I don't smell smoke in my house, either from my, my fireplace or from anyone else's. Uh, four years ago, my neighbor demanded that I raise my chimney above his roof line. At that time, I'd already spent over 20, well, about $2,400 installing the wood stove, and uh, I told him that if he wanted to pay for it, I'd be happy to have it raised. He declined the offer. Uh, I'd like to inform the council uh, as an act of good faith uh, to this neighbor and for another reason that I've recently had the chimney raised so it actually extends quite far past his, his roof line. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've attended the Burn It, Work Smart, uh, Burn it Smart Workshop program that was put on by the Sydney of Nanaimo. Even though the turnout was poor, I thought it was a great workshop. Uh, it had valuable information. Uh, I'd actually like to see the, the city in Nanaimo expand the program if it's at all possible. It could be used as a tool to assist neighborhood problems where wood smoke is an issue. If the issue is because of an old wood stove, then the, the wood stove exchange program would just fit right in there. Um, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to cost the city much money. In fact, <coughs> I personally think that the fire, fire departments or a similar agency can be used to promote... Um, <coughs> uh, promote and investigate any complaints. Uh, it would be a shame to, to lose the, the right to burn wood, especially in Nanaimo, uh, where, there, where we still have a forest industry. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about and arguments about carbon emissions. Uh, the one I hear about most recently is being carbon neutral. I'd like to suggest to you that burning wood for heat, if done correctly, um, as it is discussed in the Burn It Smart workshops, is carbon neutral. I say this because the wood is typically, the wood is typically burned in Nanaimo is salvaged from the wood lots uh, that's pretty, that are harvested by the local forest communities. Um, as an example um, of this, the local Fish and Game Club over the past number of years have managed the various lots so that the citizens of Nanaimo have a, a local source of firewood. Um, if we did not salvage this firewood, uh, it would be pushed into big piles and burned anyway in order to make room for tree planting and reforestation. When the wood is burned at high temperature, virtually nothing but carbon dioxide and water vapor is produced. Trees use the carbon dioxide from the air in order to grow and the byproduct is oxygen. Wood heat is a renewable resource as opposed to natural gas and furnace oil, which are limited resources. With all this said, I do not think the nuisance bylaw should be used in an attempt to regulate the smoke in Nanaimo. For one, how can you prove without a doubt that the smoke from one specific chimney is causing a problem when that neighborhood is surrounded? That neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods have many other burners. This is almost impossible to enforce. This could also open the door to other complaints. For example, if a person's allergic to perfume uh, complains about the neighbor who uses perfume dryer sheets in their dryer. Uh, uh, the smells from that dryer vent uh, could affect the use and enjoyment of their property. There, <laughs> there can be no end of it. Um, it would be far easier to enforce a bylaw against uh, individuals who make incessant unfounded complaints against a neighbor and therefore interferes with that neighbor's right to, right to enjoy the, new, the use of their property. A far more practical approach would be to ban, would be to ban all non-certified wood stoves or open fireplaces by a certain date, you know, give people a chance to 
either uh, upgrade their, their uh, <coughs> um, wood stoves or you know get inserts for fireplaces. Um, expand the wood stove exchange program to help provide incentive for people to upgrade the wood bur- upgrade their wood burning appliances. This would dramatically help reduce the smoke issue. It would also be easy to identify homes not in compliance or burning incorrectly. The Burn It Smart Workshop can be used as a tool to assist those circumstances. Again, it, would be easily, it could be easily monitored and investigated, by, and investigated by the local fire department or similar agency. In conclusion, I strongly feel that the City of Nanaimo wants to be involved. I strongly feel that if the City of Nanaimo wants to be involved with wood burning issues, then the City should do so proactively and through open communication and education. Not to be, not to be creating or amending bylaws. With regards to this particular case, um, I personally feel that the civil court system was designed for these issues and uh, it, it's designed to uh, resolve disagreements between two parties. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kirk. Um, I've got a couple of questions, and, and there's also a couple other uh, councillors that have got questions. First of all, um, are you aware that we've already res- uh, referred this to staff for, to review the policy on wood stoves? So uh, that's uh, a work in progress, and uh, we're expecting to hear back from them. So obviously we're not really going to comment too much until we get the staff review back on it. Um, and I'm just wondering, when did you attend? The, you said you attended the workshop on it. You found it quite interesting, poorly attended. When was that? That was in, uh, I think, the end of November of this of uh, November of 2009. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was and the first time I've actually ever heard of the program. Okay. And um, you mentioned that you uh, had a chimney addition put on um, uh, to partly, I guess, satisfy the concerns that, that your neighbor had. How much of addition did, was it in height? You said it's roof level, but what does that mean? In uh, I believe it was a four-foot <laughs> four section. A four-foot section? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, you mentioned also that you had accepted most of the recommendations that had been given and implemented a number of them. But I just wondered, what recommendations did you not accept? Or were there some things that you chose not to comply uh, with? Was, which, what was, would they be? No, it, it, it was a very, very general um, ways of starting fires. I, I've try, I tried okay. them, and I did like some versus some of you know others. I, I liked some of the, the methods where it actually starts the fire a lot quicker. Uh, they discuss top-down fires, <laughs> side-to-side fires, and traditional fires. We put the, the paper underneath. And, okay. uh, I've, you know, over since I've taken that course or taken the workshop, I've played around with all the different methods to see what works the best. Okay, thank you. We've got a couple of questions. Councillor Patchy. Thank you, Worship. Um, hello, Mr. Kirk. Um, I don't know if you recall, but about a year ago, I, um, after having visited the Spurlings, came to your door. It's last March. Uh, last March, so we're close to that. Um, at which time, you really did not indicate to me that you were really willing to consider anything, because, as you explained, you'd had all these issues over the years with the Spurlings, and I guess you're kind of at the end of the road. Um, Having said that, would you agree, by virtue of the fact that your house is so much lower than the Spurlings, that your chimney is at a level with their house, which which is problematic? The top of the chimney is at the level of their roof. It's not at the level as the the Not the top of the roof, though. It's lower. Not at the very peak of the roof, no, No. because the, the chimney is offset to the side. You know, it it really concerns me, and I still have this vision of going into this this home and seeing all the inside windows taped up with plastic, and, and it was almost suffocating to even just look at it. I've seen a lot of people do that just for the reason of keeping heat inside their house. Um, the, the, per, the person who used to live in the house before the, the Sperlings moved in uh, sold the house because she didn't want to start spending the money to have it upgraded. <coughs> she, she was at the realization she had the furnace upgraded, she had that to, to natural gas, but she, she was a single, single, uh, single person and she didn't really have the finance, financial mm-hmm. support to be able to start replacing windows and doing the things that are necessary for that. It is an old house. Mm-hmm. It is. I guess all I want you to acknowledge is that it's it's an unusual situation. It's not like two homes on one level um, where the smoke ostensibly would go over the next roof. Um, your house would be lower by about how much? Five, six feet? 
seven? No, probably about two to Less three feet that. at the very most. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I have to tell you, I, I'm up and down uplands quite a bit, and I have seen a change. I, I keep, can't help it. I, I look at your chimney when I drive past, mm -hmm. and it looks pretty good now. <laughs> but, higher? but there were days where yeah. it did not look good, um, even in the middle of the day. Like I say, I, uh, I, I personally learned quite a bit. I don't think I was bringing correctly before that, but I have learned a few tricks to make sure that it doesn't. Okay, thanks. Uh, to me, it's an ongoing educational. Uh, from the day I bought the stove, it's been trying to train myself or teach myself how to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Councillor Kip. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through the Environment Committee, the Burn Smart program comes on. I think it's really nice to hear that um, someone participated and it was a good program. I hope people realize that with a nuisance or we don't want to ban wood stoves. We want to make people burn them as intelligently as possible. And if they're using less fuel and getting the most BTUs out of it, it's absolutely important. This is a very, like you said, a civil issue. Um, you can remedy it with your neighbor? You don't think so? I have no idea. Um, it's a tough one. Without getting into it, he, I, I've had phone calls from not just the bylaw officers, but other agencies of complaints. Well, so hopefully it'll remedy itself. Thanks. Councillor Unger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, like uh, Councillor Apache, I've taken an interest in this particular uh, situation. <coughs> and I've talk to bylaws staff who have investigated and they report to me that there are at least three other wood burning homes on the other side of Mr. Sperling's house so that any smoke uh, is not necessarily from Mr. Kirk's home that there are numerous other houses in the area so it depends on which way the wind is blowing and uh, the bylaws staff have told me a number of times it is a civil issue it's not a something the city can regulate in their opinion and it uh, is something that the two uh, homeowners have to settle in some way or other even if it is by court thank you thank you <laughs> Thank you, sir. There's no further questions that we have here. Move and second. Move and second. Move and second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, we're down to um, the question period, um, agenda items only. <coughs> Fred Taylor of 204 Emory Way. Mayor Rattan, during the presentation by the Chamber of Commerce, you raised the question about business license fees. And I was just wondering, in a study or a report or whatever, if it could be considered that everybody pays a business license. And regards, I mean, uh, if you look at a letterhead out of a lawyer's office, every lawyer has a law corporation but operates under an umbrella of one license in that office. Real estate all work individually, claim their cars, everything else, and operate only one license out of that office. Uh, doctors, same way. Without raising license fees, you could maybe generate more money by making everybody pay that low fee. And even the three P organizations or type of people that I mentioned do gain beneficially by development, economic <coughs> development of our area. Real estate people selling everything else. Everybody benefits. Why can't they just pay a small fee for a license for themselves as well? Because okay. they're operating under that. It's been an old argument that keeps coming. If you try to uh, entertain that question, sometimes you get people in mass, real estate people, etc. No way. They only want to pay a license under the you know, office of the umbrella. Okay, thank you. The other question I would like to ask is, one of the grow-up properties was pulled from the agenda. Would that be because of a building permit in progress? Are we able to uh, disclose the reason it was pulled? Yes, Your Worship. Yes, Your Worship. The uh, file 
at 284 Emory Way was pulled because the uh, owner has rectified the problem to the satisfaction of the city? That brings me to my question. Uh, if anyone's seen the national program marketplace on Friday night, they spend a whole half hour with grow-ups in houses. And a very famous uh, by TV in inspection, construction inspection person came on this show and went into some of the houses to show how you could pick off whether there's been alterations to the house because of a grow-up. I happen to see that same show. And my question is, would the best liability of the taxpayers be for protection be to put a notice on title and leave it there, don't remove it, even if it's, in your opinion, or inspection fixed, because of Mr. Kip might know more about this, is, uh, or Councillor Kip, uh, moisture that hasn't created mildew, et cetera, to the point, may create it later when that envelope of that building is recreated, et cetera, and somebody could go in there and say, look at it just like we did on Friday night, and spot things and tear it apart to inspect and find, say, mold starting again or whatever, because the moisture hasn't, or whatever, the correction has been accepted to fix it. So therefore, I'm asking maybe because of the small price of allowing something like this in the building, <coughs> sometimes major scales that we've seen reported lately, notice on title, period, is left there. Interesting point. We'll have to discuss it with staff and see. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Your Worship. I have a question. Councillor Patchy. Just a question to staff, if I may. I watched that same Marketplace uh, CBC program last week as well, and now I'm curious to hear from staff how a grow-up is, is taken care of to your satisfaction. Uh, could you explain that? Yes, to Councillor Patchy, uh, a council policy we developed about six or eight years ago was to uh, follow a process of remediation. One of the main components of that remediation is the owner has to hire a professional, usually a biologist, who goes in and takes tests of the building, including air tests, uh, after the grow up has, has uh, been identified. Then remediation is undertaken under that professional's direction and tests are uh, completed when the remediation is complete. If that uh, follow-up test confirms the house is free of any contaminants, then that professional will sign off the building and thus the, the owner can apply to have the notice on title removed. If council wishes, we can review that uh, policy that we have in place uh, to determine if we go far enough, but we certainly think the, the current uh, regulation serves that purpose. And, and that particular procedure has been followed in, in the case of Emory Way? That's correct. Thank you. If you don't mind, uh, Mayor Rattan, um, the liability would be left then with the professional if there is ever a follow-up problem, and the professional may not be here in business or whatever, and I think uh, the liability of the city needs better consideration for, for forever on that property unless the building is removed. I don't disagree. I, I think it's something the staff can look at. And uh, I think the, the point was that uh, this particular show um, had something like five people, uh, five licensed uh, home inspectors come in, and not one of them were able to identify um, the areas that this particular uh, builder had, had identified. Having said that... Okay, is there a second? Uh, oh. Okay, hang on. Your Worship, with reference to the... Uh, um, uh, Nature's Trust, Voices of Nature. Did you want to make a decision on that tonight, to your Worship, as to the request for three thousand dollars? Well, there they, was a verbal request for three thousand dollars. There's a written letter. It's, it's uh, this one that's right on top of your on your left hand, uh, right there. Yeah. And at the very very bottom, if you look at that. Um, I would kind of like to get a little bit more information before doing a knee-jerk decision on this thing. And I was going to suggest it be one alternative would be to refer it to Parks and... Um, yeah, that would, be, sorry, my, that would be my motion, um, Your Worship. Why did you make the that motion? We, yes, I'd like to make a motion that the, um, the request be referred yes, to Parks, Recreation and Culture for consideration. Okay. 
Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Now we stand adjourned. Thank you.